Good afternoon, 10x5. I hope you are doing well. Uh, I know it's Thursday, so you've been back at school for the whole week, but it's the first time I've spoken to you uh, since the end of half term. So welcome back. Uh, I hope you're doing well, and I hope you had a chance to rest and recover and de-stress a little bit as we head back into, um, well, it's the longest half term of the year, I think. But fortunately, as you've probably heard, uh, come March 8th, in one way or another, we're going to slowly start returning to school. We're just waiting to hear um, from the head teacher exactly how that's going to happen. So I look forward to seeing you in the classroom once again quite soon. Uh, and with that in mind, we're going to wrap up uh, what we started last half term uh, with our final non-fiction lesson on the topics that we've been covering so far. So why don't we turn to that now? This is our final uh, of the non-fiction lessons that we're doing that are connected by the theme of sports. And we've looked at cycling earlier with a Tour de France champion. Uh, we've looked at boating and we've looked at football. So let's wrap it up with this one. We're gonna begin by reading uh, a text together. Uh, it's uh, a comedy writer writing about the idea, the crazy idea of women cycling. Can you imagine such a crazy thing? As we read it, as it says here on the slide, um, do you find it funny? And if you do find it funny, which parts of it do you think are funny? And if you're able to, also try and consider the tone. What is the tone of the author's voice? Uh, is it angry? Is it sad? Is it happy? Is it sarcastic? Um, what do you think of the person who's speaking here, who's writing here? Okay, so let's turn to this now and read it together. For the reading, please follow the link in the assignment uh, that will bring you to um, my reading of the text. Uh, I apologize for the quality of the scan uh, or copy. Uh, I had to do it with my phone and the lighting wasn't too good, but hopefully you'll be able to follow along as I read it to you. So please do that now before we move on to the next piece of work. Okay, now that we've finished the reading, we can move on to the activities. Uh, the first one is for you to pick out three places where you think the writer, uh, who goes by the name Jerome, is trying to be funny. You might not find it funny, but you should be able to pick out when someone is trying to be funny. I'm sure you've had a teacher stand in front of you and crack a joke, and you know that teacher is trying to be funny and isn't you know that it's a failed attempt at humor. Well, here with Jerome, is he being funny? Is he trying to be funny? Pick up three places and you can fill it in uh, in the grid. The worksheet will guide you through all this work as well. So let's do activity two now. So this is the grid that I'm asking you to fill in. Do it in as much detail as you can. Uh, in the first example, euphemistic means uh, to say something that isn't direct. Uh, you say it in a way that is a bit more gentle. So for example, if you have a pet that is old and you bring it to the vet to be killed, we don't say, I'm going to have my dog killed or my cat killed. We say we're putting it down because putting it down sounds gentler, okay? Um, that's using a euphemism. So he's using that kind of language to talk about people falling off their cycles. Okay, so try and find two more examples, if you can. Why it might be funny. Who is Jerome making fun of? And I give it a score from one to five. This is activity three. Uh, we're actually going to skip this one today. Now I say skip it. If you want to attempt it as an extension task, if you want to push yourself a bit further, by all means, please try this one. Uh, but for the work I'm sending you for today, I think we can um, skip over this one. This one here though, activity four, is your main task for today. Uh, you'll see on the worksheet that there is a list of statements that are all connected to the text, uh, to the article, Women in Wheels. Now for each one, you just have to agree or disagree with the statement, okay? and try and explain why. Then you're gonna pick one of the statements, just one, 
and you're going to use that statement uh, as a trigger for writing one full paragraph. And that's what I'm hoping you'll turn it off. It's what I'm expecting you to turn in today, a single full paragraph. Um, as it says here, uh, justifying why you think that statement is the best of the bunch. Okay, how does that statement connect to the text? What does it tell you about the way Jerome writes? And can you find any quotes in the text to support your point of view here? You can see here the statements that you're working with for Activity 4. They're also on the worksheet. Uh, so pick one of these uh, to work with for writing your paragraph. Finally, you might be wondering, why are we even doing this? Uh, one half of your English language GCSE is nonfiction. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit last half term. And what this specific lesson is trying to do is to get you to pick up on the style or the tone of a writer. It's not necessary to talk about these things when you're doing English language paper two, but those of you who can, who can show that you're aware that a writer is trying to speak with a certain voice, is trying to be uh, angry about something, or is making fun of something, but in a nice way versus a mean way. Well, if you can write about that, if you can identify that, it raises the quality of your answer. It's definitely a way to get a higher grade, uh, a better mark, because it shows that you've got um, a capacity that you're able to understand what a writer is trying to do. Now, next week, uh, we are going to do a, a sort of a mini assessment just to zoom in on this nonfiction that we've been studying now for seven lessons, just to see how much of it is sunk in. Um, and so 10x5, that's your lesson for today. If you have any problems or difficulties, don't hesitate to contact me, send me an email and I'll try and get back to you. But otherwise, uh, keep healthy, keep safe, and goodbye.